And there's two parts to a roll. The first part to a role is what they call the trusted entity. Who can assume that role? Who can make that first call of assumed role, right? So that it's so there's so so when you create a role, you have to say, okay, who can assume this role? So the first one is you can, a service can assume the role. So this is the first use case that I talked about the fact that you can actually pick EC2 is the only thing can assume this role. Lambda can assume this role. All these other services can assume this role. So if I pick a, it can be assumed by EC2 instance. Then the next step is the actual permissions that this role has. So when you create an IAM user, you don't really have that trust entity set step, right? Because IAM user is actually an ent uh, actual entity. But in case of IAM roles, you have to, you have, it's a two part process. One is you have to say, okay, what service can assume this role, can make that assume role call to STS. And then you add what permissions you want this thing to do. So not, then we can say, okay, I want this role to have S3 full access. So the trusted entity, like you pick the service that you want to assume the role. Yeah, that can make that call assume role. Yes, that can assume that role. Yes. So like then, then I pick what permissions the role has. So I want to um, show this. And I'm going to go through the other trusted entity options that's available besides the service. Okay. okay. So that one is same account, service to service um, role. I'm going to create another role again. This time, my trusted entity is not going to be AWS service in my, my account. It's going to be another account. So you see this? So another account can assume that role. In that case, I put the account number that can assume this role. Of course, I give the account ability to assume the role, but on their side, they also have to specify what service can assume that. But we'll, I'll get into that one later here. But just know that the other trusted entity that's available for you is another AWS account. So this account here is an account that lives within my organization, right? It's an account that belongs to my organization. But I can, I can actually also give, give access to assume this role to a, not a third party account. That's when I would require external ID. So let's say this is, so this is how a lot of, like if you have vendors that also have AWS and you need them to do, you need the access to do something in your account. You can actually give, you can actually give them permission by allowing them to, to assume a particular role, but in that case, you have they have to provide an external ID that you don't need if it's your own organization account. So that's another entity that can assume a role. A service can assume a role. You can pick another account to assume the role. Then the other two that we're not going to do today, we're not going to play around. We're going to play around with the first two today. But the other two, we're not going to play around with them today. You can also allow a, um, using Cognito and, or you can, so, so let's say somebody logs in with um, a Gmail. If you, if, you have, if you have single sign on support for your AWS services and you're allowing somebody with their Gmail account to be able to do stuff in your AWS environment, you can also do that with roles. But well, these ones are using what they call federated identities. So you can either do that with Cognito or you can do that with OpenID or you can do that with SAML Federation. So we're not gonna go through these two ones today, but I just want to give you a, an idea that these are all the entity, trusted entities that you can actually allow to assume a role. Services within your own account, another account, somebody coming through Cognito or through SAML Federation. So I'm going to stop here in terms of so that that so that's anyway that so that's the core areas when it comes to I am roles which I have here. So basically, access policy, the permissions that they can do, and then the trust policy, who can use this role, who can assume the role, and what access is allowed for whoever assumes this role. Those are the three two pieces when it comes to um, uh, I am role. There's a slide that I think I missed. Which one? 
That one that you said was bulky. <laughs> oh, this one, yes. No, this, okay, well, it was the first one, the 10. Yeah, this is kind of what I was showing oh, you. Oh, this is what we just did. Oh, okay. This is what we just talked about, yes. Uh, I'll try to clean this up a little bit to be not as bulky as it is. But that's that's really what I was speaking to right now is those four, mm -hmm. four trusted identities that you can use when it comes to IEM rules. But yeah, I need to clean that. That needs to be a little bit more bullet point listed. But yeah, that's what exactly what I was doing there. Service, account, open ID, connect, and SAML federation, yes. So let's talk about same account access. So same account access, we already kind of talked about that, right? Um, you have a requester, which is within your AWS account. Um, they have a role that's assigned to them and they just basically just do it as normal. Um, so let me kind of get out here. Let me see what I'm trying to get out with these slides here. I already talked about, uh, this is cross account. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it is. So this is the cross account visual visual. You see account A. Once I have access to account B, right? Yeah. So the first step is they basically assume the role using SCS service, the role that account B gave them access to. And then they use that credentials to make the call to account B's DynamoDB database. So in that case, they can make that cross account call. So let's just go in there and just start um, um, testing out a few things. I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to actually we're gonna first just do the service-based role creation work, and then we'll move on to um, and then we'll move on to cross account um, one today. So when you go to Pathrite, the what you're gonna be doing is all the sudden Pathrite. So let me tell you which one to pick from. And I'm gonna stop sharing. But before I before I stop sharing, I want to show you what I want you to what we're gonna work on from a Pathrite perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, I should have I pulled it over. I think I did, but I don't know if I did or not. Did I pull it over already? No, we already did. Oh, we didn't do the credential report one. I do want to do that. Let's see what I'm doing this, please. Policy. Change this. Okay, let me go and pull it over. I haven't, I haven't pulled it over yet. Okay. Let me know if you got the IAM policy exercise one. Do you, okay. 
on my yeah on your thing. yeah so go ahead and go ahead and stop. i'm going to stop sharing let you let you share Yeah, just yeah. This one. Yeah, one right there. Okay, so we're gonna test out all these policies. Some of them are gonna be um, service. One. Some of them are going to be, um, you know, the first, the first, the first three. The one that has to download the ones first. And this so these, Yeah, this four. This four. This four on the top there, right? Um, so we're gonna do that. Yeah, that one, that's what we're gonna do first. This one is just purely service. Um, this one is not cross account. The second one is cross account. This one is not cross account. Okay, so the so before we do that though, we need to set up your EC2 instances to assume that role. So first thing first, I want you to create an EC2 instance. So go ahead and launch an EC2 instance in your account. Did I have plenty like this? What did you say? How did I have plenty like this? And those are security groups. Those are security groups that we created over oh, time. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using the one we had before. I'm doing a new one. Create a new one. Create a new one. Create a new one. I think it's an IP address to use. Which am I? Um, just the the the, the first one that shows up. Yeah. My micro is fine. This one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go back. We need to do a few things before you do. Click on next. Don't, don't. go to previous. Go to previous again. Mm -mm. Go to previous again. <laughs> How did you fly to here? Now? Because you clicked on the blue button. <laughs> 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 you caught. You, you clicked on review and launch instead of next. Oh, instead, instead, of instead of the next, yeah. I thought I didn't even see the next though. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they. I don't know why they wanted to click on review and launch and skip all the other stuff. So we need to pick our network. So we're gonna pick our app VPC. So our first okay. one, we're gonna be our app VPC. Yes, we're gonna, we're gonna pick a public subnet. Anyone? Anyone is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to say auto assign. So we're going to enable auto assign IP address. Sorry. I'm writing the process. That's why I'm slow. Which one? The next, the next drop down list, we're going to say auto assign IP address enable. Okay. Um, so all we're doing here is just selecting our VPC, our networking elements. We're going to click on next. So why don't you know this one? All these stuff doesn't matter. These are just more advanced settings for EC2 instances that you don't care about. So click on next for storage. Okay. You, you went ahead and skipped it again. How do I keep this thing? <laughs> what does it say? We've noticed that you have changed your networking setting, which may clear your security. Yeah, so you need to... Um, yeah, just say next. Yeah, I want you to click on storage, Joe, but that's fine. We'll come back again. So click on next. Just click on the next option here. Okay, so go previous again for me. And I just click here. Yeah, you can also use the, the top navigation, yes. 
actually what we really, what really matters is the configure security group section and we've done it right no click on that one configure security groups oh we're not doing the storage part oh I thought uh, storage is just i mean storage which is we're just going to leave whatever storage they have which is eight that's fine we're not going to tag it so we're just going to go directly to um configure security groups okay so we're going to create a new we're going to create a new security group here and you can call it EC2 Connect for the security group name. And then that's good dash. Yeah, dash is fine. Uh -huh. EC2 dash connect dash SG. And then description. You can you can just say the same name for. So do EC2 dash connect dash SG for security group for the name, dash okay. SG, go and add dash SG in there. And just use the same description for the name too. So because we're gonna try to SSH into the box, so SSH is the right thing, but we're gonna do the source gonna be different. Let me give you the IP address for the source. We're not gonna open up to the world, we actually, because we don't wanna do that. Let me give you the IP address that you wanna use for your source. I can find it here. DevOps training. This is dang IP address. Yeah, this is it right here. So I'm gonna chat you over Zoom or both Zoom and Slack. Zoom or Slack? I'll send it to both of you. Okay. I just sent you to Slack right now, but I'll send you to Zoom. Okay. And then click on launch and review now. That's fine, just launch it. And then um, choose an existing one. That one's fine, the one you are, and then you say acknowledge. And then you just say launch instance. Okay, so once it's up and running, we're gonna connect to it. Why did this one stop? Who stopped? What'd you say? <laughs> I'm going to this one that stopped. I said, who stopped? I did, because every single oh. time it runs, it charges. <laughs> 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 I stopped it. So okay, running. so what'd you say? It's running now. Okay, so go ahead and select it. Or you could have selected on that list view too. That's fine. Um, so we're connecting this easy to instance to what? We're going to connect to it. Why is it not letting you connect? So go back for me. Go back. Why is it not letting you connect? So select it. Just check box. Do the check box on it. Oh. Yeah. Then click on, should have, click on connect. I think it was just delayed. Click on connect, the connect button at the top. We're gonna connect using um, instance connect, not session manager. So click on the first one. Mm -hmm. And then click on connect. Okay. So our SQ instance is, is this, is running, and we're gonna try to try to access our S3 bucket. So this is where we're gonna use some CLI commands to access our S3 bucket. So I'm gonna give you the CLI command to use. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to, which one do you prefer, Zoom or Slack, or does it matter to you? Uh, anyone, I mean, they're both- I'll send it to you on Slack so you can at least, 
I was sending to a Slack so I can have a history and I'll I'll put this up in a in a lab form too, which I didn't mm -hmm. have to do. So AWS S3 LS. So type that on your command line. Yeah, just like this, right? Exactly, just right there. Mm -hmm. Enter. Enter, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So AWS is the AWS CLI. So when you when it, by default, it's already installed on this image. So you don't have to install it or configure it yourself. The next option is what service you're trying to connect to. And then the one, what command you want to use. In this case, we're basically saying, list all my S3 buckets, what this command is saying. And right now it's saying you don't have any credentials to be able to list S3 bucket. It's not even a matter of permission denied. It basically says that you don't have any credentials, right? Yeah. So, um, so there's two ways we could go, right? What are the two ways we could go with this? So what are the two, so to, for us to get credentials, what are the two ways we could go with this for our EC2 instance? Access keys. The what? Well, to get credentials. What are the two paths we could go with our EC2 instances when it comes to um, uh, um, setting up ourselves to be able to have access from a credential perspective? What, what two paths can we go with it? Oh, with... Um... Connect to another account. No, 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 no. So let me let me explain what I'm trying to get at. Okay. So we can we can do two things, right? We can either we can create IM user, right? Yeah. For this EC2 instance, and that would give us what kind of credential? Identity. No, give us long term credentials, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and do AWS configure. Just go ahead and do AWS configure right now. Just type in AWS space configure. Okay, press enter. So it's going to ask you for your access key, right? Yeah. And then if you press enter again, it's going to ask you for your secure key, right? And then yeah. if you press enter again, it's going to ask you for a region. So type in US dash West dash two for me. Dash West dash two. And then press enter. And then press enter again. Okay. So that's our first option. We could actually create an IM user, right? What they call, and then get access keys and then configure the access keys on EC2 instance. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the IM user that we create in this case will be an IM user that doesn't have console access, but has the access key access. And that's what they call service account. It's just a generic term for it, All right? So that's one way we could do that. But if we do that, what that means is that my credentials is not only long-term, but it's also visible on this box itself. It's stored physically on this box and that's a security problem. So what is our other option instead of going down the IAM user route? What, op what other options do we have for our EC2 instance to gain access if we don't want to go the IAM user route? What other paths can we go? Wrong. Hmm? Role. Role, exactly. And that's what we're going to do. So we're not going to set up an IAM user. We could set up an IAM user for EC2 and then configure the access key and secret key, but we're not going to go down around. So we're going to go and create a role for our EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and create a role. So what should I do now? Now leave this one alone. Go back oh. to your tab before. Your, this one is still open. And actually, you know what, what I would I suggest that you do? Open up another tab with right click on aws and then open up another tab window so we have three open at all times because your other um or if you have this one open i'll reload this one right because you you the, your connect window is going to it's going to close out so go back to IAM. let's create an IAM role for our ec2 instance Within the service role. So what service do we want to allow to assume this role? EC2. Yeah, so they usually put EC2 at the top. <laughs> but um, if it's any other service, then you'll pick that one. But in this case, it's EC2, that's fine. Okay, so what kind of permissions do you want to give your EC2 instance based on the command that I asked you to, to do? What is the command? Okay, wait. 
I want you to list all your S3 buckets. Is what I want you to give. So, so that for was now, the, what'd you say? That was the meaning of the S3 LS. Yes, list all my S3 buckets. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. So for now, we can just give it full access, S3 full access. Where is that? You have to search for it. Oh. Just type in S3 and it'll come up. There is a second one down. Although that's definitely more of a, not a least privileged approach, but um, we're going to do some other stuff with it besides that. So that's fine. And call it, you can call your EC2 um, S3 role. Does it need dash? No, I usually for roles, I just usually use what they call camel case. So uppercase e, EC2. And then S3. Yeah. And then roll uppercase R. And then lowercase O L E. Although it will take dashes too if you want, but I really I just usually just follow the pattern that they use for their own role naming. So that's what I do. This one is to let us use to connect to to, uh, to access S3. You can say that, yeah. To access S3. That's all. Mm -hmm. So create the role. Okay. So we have this role created, but we need to attach this role to our ECT instance, right? Because right now the role is just there. So we're going to go back to our, ECT, our instance view. So go back to your, um, go back to EC2, go to EC2. Mm, now leave this one alone. Actually leave this one. Open up, just open up another, um, go back to your IM session and open up another, um, no, oh, wrong window. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. No, don't do that. You're gonna lose all your connect. Don't do that. Just open just open up one one you already have and just go to the IM one and just click on ECT. Just search for ECT. You don't this one. Yeah, I can just yeah, you can open up another one. You can just go to ECT here. And we're gonna go back to our instance that we just launched. And then we're going to go to actions. See on the top right hand side, you see where it says actions at the top. And we're going to security. And then we're going to modify IAM rule. And then we're going to select the one we just created right there. And then we're going to say save. Okay. So what we just did here, we have a role created, but until you actually attach it to ECT WinSense, it doesn't know about it. So you actually have to attach the role to the ECT instance itself directly. So let's go back to our black screen where we have our terminal commands, which is basically the terminal. We're gonna type in that AWS S3 LS command again, if the session is still valid. It might not, it might, it might have to refresh, but we'll see. We'll get lucky. So now we, have, we can do stuff. So now you listed all your S3 buckets. So once you attach that role, Behind the scene, when you type in that command, AWS S3 LS, the first step that command does is basically reaches out to STS and says, I want to assume the role that has been attached to me. And STS says, yes, this is, this is an EC2 trust entity. You are allowed to assume that role. I'm going to give you your temporary credentials. Then you're going to use those credentials to then reach out to S3 to do the list bucket command. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in this case, we did not go down the path to create an IAM users. We're actually using a role to actually do the work that we wanted to. Okay, so what I want you to do now is I want you to go to the path right. So we're going to open up that first policy there and tell me what does it tell, what is it, um, well, um, explain to me what that policy states. Although I think the title might tell you what it is, but I still want you to explain to me what that policy states. So open up that JSON file. It is here. Yeah. Okay. So what does this policy say? Deny. Okay. Deny S3 bucket. Then what? I don't. 
I don't know if it's deny access. Maybe it's deny access to S3 bucket. Well, it says deny, but um. Oh wait, 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 wait! I'm rushing. So I think is when, like, if they're trying to, I don't know if it's open a bucket in this. If it's not this IP address, then don't open the bucket. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> exactly, that's exactly right. Okay. So in this case, the deny is only for anything that is not this IP address, right? Yeah. So anything with this IP address will be allowed to make S3, call any S3 action, mm -hmm. right? So if I want it to be where I want your, your EC2 instance to be, only your EC2 instance to be allowed access to your S3 bucket, then what would I need to do? What changes would you make on here? Allow. No, what was the question? What's the question? You, what was the question now? Okay, so you stated a minute ago that this policy is actually saying that deny access for anything that is not using this IP address, right? Mm hmm Okay. So if I want only your EC2 instance. To be able to act, if, you, if I still want your condition to be still be true of where you can access S3 bucket, what would you mm -hmm. change in here to make it be where your EC2 users can still access S3? Even if I'm not in this IP address? Well, that's that's the thing, right? Is that you need to change the IP address to be your IP address, right? Right. So the source IP address becomes your IP address. With that case, then you can still access your S3 bucket. So let's go and get your IP address for EC2 instance. So go back to your EC2 instance for me. Leave that. Yeah, you're gonna need that policy. Gone, so I want you to create that policy. So click on your EC, click select um, click on the checkbox for EC2 instance. Okay. Go to networking. Now, actually, you don't have to go to networking. You see the public IP address. Now go to details. Go to details. Go. So you see the public IP address right there. The what is it? So copy that. And then go to your policy. Oh, this one. Mm -hmm. Is that what I'm supposed to open? Actually, before we do that, I want you to, I want to show you the whole deny thing. So before we do that, actually, I want you to save that off. I want you to put your own personal IP address in there. Okay, so, that? Yeah, so go ahead and find your own IP address. Go to my IP, go to Google, open up another window, go to Google and type in my IP address. What is my IP address? Mm. That looks like a Nigerian kitchen. Oh, it was my apartment. They were having a bingo night at the leasing office. Oh, that's your apartment? For some reason, it looked like a Nigerian kitchen. <laughs> the layout of it. Anyway. The they were having bingo night, so they were inviting uh, everybody. Oh, that's okay. That's not actually a kitchen. That's just one of those um, areas. Okay. Yeah, pizza and stuff. I got you. No, it's not my kitchen. It's a leasing office kitchen. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's why. Oh, you said my address, yeah. Yeah, so I want your IPv4 one. So click on that link and get your IP address. So copy that. Yeah, just don't copy the link. Just copy the, the actual value itself. Don't copy mm -hmm. the link. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay so then, I want you to change your IP address. I want to only allow your IP address to have access. So change that IP address to yours as a source. And it'll be slash 32 is what it would be. So be, whatever you copy there in slash 32. Slash 32. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then for your bucket, um, for the resource, go ahead and just put star. Just actually put just put one of your bucket names in there. Put one of your yeah. bucket names in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So go back to your S3 and find one of your bucket names and put that in there.
This one. Yeah, use that one. Copy that one. Mm -hmm. Put it in here. This is my bucket. Yeah, replace that. Mm -hmm. Question for you. Okay, Do you remember what what kind of actions require a slash star? That's what I was going to look for. <laughs> <laughs> you remember what kind of actions generally require you to put a slash star after it? What oh, kind of SP actions star. require that? Mm -hmm. Oh, when you I remember now, I don't have to look When you want them to access what's in like the content of the bucket. Yeah, so what kind of actions generally tied to that? There was two one that you, that we've you've seen a few times already. There's two action, S three actions that you've seen related to that. List. No, not list. List is not related to. Oh, to so within the bucket. Yes. Yeah, so what two actions have we seen that has to do with doing something on something within the bucket itself? Um, it was. Get, so one start with a G. Get get get, get object. And what's the other one? Starts with a P. Mm. I don't want to flip put object. So when you never you see things with object that as an action, then you want to make sure you have a a policy that has a slash star there. I remember that slash. Star. Yeah. So go ahead and set go ahead. So I want you to go ahead and create a policy. I want you to create so a wait, only one of them has to have the star. What'd you say? This doesn't have the star. Is that okay? Yeah, but that the, that first one allows you because if you notice the action is S3 colon star, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically saying all actions on S3, including list, get, put, everything. So that's why you need both of them. Okay. Because it's the action list is not limited to just get or put. It it, it can also be list. So you need both resource uh, patterns for to support this kind of s3 dot star action list that's showing there okay so we're going to go ahead and create a a policy you're going to create your own customer managed policy with this rule set in it so go ahead and create your own customer managed policy and you can name it the same name as the file that i gave you Can I remember? You have the JSON, just go to JSON directly and just paste it. Okay. Although Thank you can try. Yeah, I just paste that whole thing in there. Yeah. Although you could try to do it through the visual editor, but this is fine. So go ahead. Yeah, just replace oh, everything. Yeah, you can replace everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. This. Um... So it needs to replace everything in there. Don't leave what they had in there. You're, you're basically putting your uh, own and replace everything, yeah. Because I was like. <laughs> there. So what we just basically, as you stated, so say, say this policy again to me. What does it mean? It means that, um, I don't know how, I'm trying to say it in one sentence. Yeah, that's what, I'm not, that's what I want you to do. I want you to say it in one sentence, yes. Deny access mm -hmm. to this estate bucket outside of this MP address. Yeah, deny access. Deny access for anything outside of this IP address. Yeah. Deny access to all IP addresses except for this IP address. Yeah. So if you want to say deny access for this IP address only, what would you do? What would you how would you change it? If you want only, if you want to deny access to just this IP address, what would you change in your in your condition? If you want to what? If if the if I want to deny this IP address access, how would I change it? Remove not. Exactly, remove the not. Perfect. So, so then it would be deny access to this IP address. But this one is deny access to anything that is not, not. this IP. 
Yes, exactly. So let's I know. Book. What did you say? <laughs> I said I know book. <laughs> <laughs> So go ahead, go ahead and name it. Uh, go ahead and name it the policy. Go ahead and name it the file name. Just name it the same file name that you just downloaded. I think it's IP restriction policy or something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Hmm? Hmm? Description is fine. Do we need it? No, we don't need it. It's not required. So just create the policy. Okay. So what I want you to do next, I want you to attach this policy to your IAM role that you created for EC2 instance. So attach this policy to the role you created for your EC2 instance. Let me, let me use why you, why you mind to see if I can do it myself. Wait, wait, let me try. What's this? No. Let me try again. <laughs> I tried this one. No, I think that they said it was access. I can't really remember. I shouted out. We <laughs> so I want you to attach I want you to attach this policy to your IM role. I think I wrote this. I'm not shaming. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I didn't write it. I wrote it, Joe. Ah, what kind of thing is that? <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to go to the room. I didn't want to put it. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could do it from the policy. What is the role that we create? Okay, EC2. Something EC2 has three access. Mm -hmm. Does it bring up anything? Okay. That's the only way you can do it. You can only do it from the role side. You can't do it from the policy side. I was just looking at. <laughs> um, it's only groups you can do it both directions, but policy is only one direction from the from the what you want to attach it to is the only way you can do it from. That's it. Okay. So we're going to go back to our terminal, our black screen. And we're going to try to issue our command again. So let's it's see what happens. I don't, I think your session is tr terminated, but go ahead and try. Go ahead and do AWS S3 LS. It's not that finished. Okay. So then refresh. Just do a refresh. Of this page? Yeah, on this page. So I think it should come up to re reconnect. Okay. So go ahead and do the AWS command again. Hmm. That's the same thing the last time. Do AWS S3 LS and then your e commerce bucket name. Hey. Space. And then your e commerce and copy your e commerce bucket name and see if, if you're allowed to do it. Oops. <laughs> oh, because I tried to do Control C. Ah, uh, who pasted it? Yeah. So, yeah, you have to type it. You have to do it again. <laughs> AWSS 3LS and then your bucket name. It didn't even let me copy this. Then press enter. And you're denied, okay. right? So um, are you? Yeah, because even though you have S3 full access, right? Because you have a yeah. deny rule in there that overrides the allow rule you already have. But wait, 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 Did we not say deny it when it's not my IP address? But this is not your EC2 instance. This is your own personal IP address, not the EC2 instance IP address. Hmm. Because we, we put your own personal IP address. I intentionally have you put your own personal IP address in there. We're going to change it to put your EC2 instance IP address, but for now, I had you put your own IP address. I was like, this one, right? We That's your own personal IP address. That's your own personal. Yeah. Not for the EC2 instance. 
Oh, we created, but did we create another policy for the EC2 instance? No, we did not. We attached the policy to the, I, the IM role, but the policy stated that the only person who can make the list on this bucket is your own personal IP address. But I mean, my IP address now. No, you're not though. You're on, you're running from your students, not from your own local machine. Oh. If you ran this command from your own local machine, then it'll be fine. But you're not running from your own local machine. You're running from the EC2 instance, which has its own IP address. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So now let's go and get the IEC students' IP address and change our policy so that it'll then be allowed. It's right there. You can copy it right there. It's right, move your mouse down a little bit. Right there, that's the public IP address. So go and edit the policy you already created and add EC2 instance to the list. Add this IP address to the list. And look for yeah. which okay. So you want me to go to the policy? Yeah, go to the policy itself, and we're going to edit it. So just go to JSON. It's going to be easier for you to edit it in JSON. Oh, and then we're going to. You see how it says? Um, so do right. comma after the quotes. No, we're not going to replace. We're just going to add on to it. Oh, so, so after the quotes, you put comma after the double quotes on line thirteen. And put comma there and then press enter double quotes mm. and then paste the IP address and then slash 32 okay and press. So that basically means you can pass in a list of IP addresses too, not just a single. So save changes. And like I said, for you, when it comes to compliance analysts, you're not going to be doing this stuff, but just need to be able to understand it in case you ever into troubleshoot it. This is really just more for you to practice so you understand the concepts more than just abstract wise. Oh, so go ahead. Go ahead. So now we said that if you're not in the EC2 IP address and my personal IP address, then you don't deny access, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So then if you go back to EC2 instance, you should be allowed now, right? If we go here, right? Mm -hmm. And you run the same command again. You can you can press your arrow key up arrow key. If you don't want to type it again, just press your up arrow key. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you the last command you executed. Now you oh. see the objects in there. Okay. So I was like, uh, I thought my IP address is like my location right now. So why would you? Um, no, no, no. It's because EC2 itself has its own IP address. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought she just moved my location. Like, oh, she's this. <laughs> I mean, we could. You could run this command on your own local machine. In that case, it would ref reflect that. But since you're running from EC2, so now you're able to list all the files underneath this bucket. So what I want to just show you here is the fact that regardless of what kind of allow access policy you have, if there's a deny anywhere, you're going to get denied, which makes sense. Yeah. It's not 930. We're going to attempt to do cross account, which is a little bit more trickier, but we'll go ahead and get started with it anyway. I have to get my brain, except it's going to have to be me and you. Okay, so what we're going to have is that I want you want to be able to access my SP bucket. Okay. So the first step is that I have, well, I'm trying to see who do I want to, who's going to do most of the work? Actually, we'll do both directions. We'll do, we'll do both ways. We'll, we'll start now. So we're going to do a cross account act is what we're going to do next. So, so the first thing is I want to be able to access your S3 bucket. So what is the first thing that you think you need to do for it? You want to access my S3 bucket. Yes, I want to access your S3 bucket. So what do you need to do to allow me to access your S3 bucket? Give you permission. So how do you do that? Uh. <sighs> Wait, how do I give you permission? How do you give me permission based on what we talked about? Mm -hmm. How do you give me permission based on what we talked about? Policy now. 
No, but so what would you, what would you, what would be, if somebody says, okay, I want, I want you to give access to another account access to your SP bucket. What's the first thing you're going to do? Create a role. Okay. So go and create the role. You'll be rushing. You don't take your time for your answer question. <laughs> What'd you say? It's <laughs> my <laughs> So if you, if I want to give you access to, mm-hmm. oh, okay, okay. Oh, I'm the one giving you access. Yes. You're giving me access to your okay. S3 bucket. To my S3 bucket. Yes. So what, which service of yours wants to connect to my S3 bucket? It doesn't matter. You're just, you're oh. just giving me, you're just allowing my account to assume role. Okay. So S3 here. No, no, no. It's the trust entity in this case, it's gonna be another AWS account. It's a trust entity. Oh, I'm giving you another account, my access. Okay, yeah. what's so your you're allow you're giving me permit and then I can decide who I want to allow to assume that role. Okay. You're, you're kind of giving me blanketed permission, right? That right. I can then decide who on my side can assume that role. But you're giving me access to assume that role. Okay. So my account is I'm giving my account number here. You see, I'm not, you see how I'm not giving you access to my SP bucket? Yeah. <laughs> this way. We'll do it by direction because you have to, you have to learn by direction. So let me give you my account number. So I just show you my account number. And I'm going to do the same thing on my side to allow you access to my SP bucket. So and, we don't. Okay. And then you're going to give me the, what permissions you want me to have access to. And in this case, we're going to do, um, um, yeah, SG full access is fine for now. Yeah. So I'm Again. allowed to. Go ahead. This my S3 bucket. What'd you say? I'm trying to think. So what kind of name? Am I going to say? I mean, doesn't the name have to? Okay. Are oh, you mean talking about the name? The role name? Yeah. You can call it cross, um, S3 cross account policy. Cross but access in policy. World, What'd you say? In the real world. In the real world mm-hmm. Would they put like maybe your name or something to just say that it was permission for you like that particular person to act oh, in, that the, uh, in the name of the role name yeah um generally no generally you wouldn't um um but i, I mean but then what if you're giving this kind of permission to like multiple accounts at a time so how do you differentiate in like, terms of naming yeah, you, you probably could put the account name on them, um, on there, in terms of the role name itself. Mm-hmm. So, like, let's say I'm giving you, I'm giving you access to my S3. I'm giving Lakon access to my S3. I'm giving Diamond access to my S3. Yeah. Do I have to put, like, something to... Qualify to make it unique, because the role name yeah. has to be unique, yes. So that I'll know that, okay, this was the one for Dami. This was the one for... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm asking. Okay, but you said we're not going to be doing this. So, so you, you can. You can put my account name in your, in your role, role name. Hmm. So, S3. I S3, don't even need my number. Cross account access. So, type in S3 all uppercase. My account number. You can copy my account number there on the bottom. Trusted entity. Um, cross account access. Jesus, it's long ago. <laughs> I know, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Make it uppercase <laughs> C and uppercase A. And uppercase A. So every single good. word, make every single word be uppercase. And uppercase A. And uppercase S. Okay. okay. 
And then description. You can you can describe or you can leave it alone and move and move to the next step. Yeah. It's just for my brain purposes. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just for practice. Uh -uh. Invalid, or maybe this. Mm. I do really, really AWS. A description is restricted. <laughs> <laughs> really, a description has restrictions in it. I understand name, but description, really. That's a lazy <laughs> developer right there. That's some lazy developer that coded that mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, but maybe they're trying to prevent um, security stuff because people can put junk in, I don't know what they're trying to prevent there. But Yeah. Okay, so now that you created a, a role, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For me to be able to assume that role, you have to give me the ARN to the role that you created. So you're going to then ship, you're going to give me the ARN. So how do you get the ARN for a role? New mom. Well, we shall go to the role first. You go to the role, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's right. Here. So, usually, am I going to email you this role or? Yeah, you email me exchange it somehow. However way it needs to be exchanged. In this case, you can slack it to me. But yes, you have to exchange that I am role to me. The ARN to it, yes. Okay, then I am going to um, show you what I'm going to do on my side to assign that role to my EC2 instance. And then when we meet next, we'll flip the, the direction. Okay. So you can stop sharing right now. I'm gonna share. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually going to go into my account. I'm going to copy it. I'm gonna log into my own account. I am. Create a policy first. Create policy. Can we create the policy first or the role first? We create the policy first. So this policy here, you see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm creating a policy to allow something, whatever I assign this policy to the ability to assume the role to this resource. So what I'm going to change this resource, I'm going to change it to your own um, ARN that you gave. So on my side, whoever I allow this policy to can then assume that role. So I want to save it. Mm -hmm. So you put <clears throat> you put the a, the ARN I gave you in in the resource section in the resource okay yes so that means whoever has this policy attached to them can only assume the role to this particular can only do it to this role itself only 
and your account number is in the um, is in the um, is in is in there. So, are you going to create a new policy? I want to create a new policy. Yes. I do need to create a new policy because that's the only way somebody can actually assume. So on my side, I have to create a new policy that gives somebody act ability to assume that role from my side. And you you do this on your side too. I'm gonna go ahead and create this policy. Okay, so I'm going to create a role for my EC2 instance. I don't think I have one. So I'm going to create a role for my EC2 instance. Dang it. Maybe I'll sidetrack. I'm going to attach this one. I'm also going to give S3. Is that my own account? No. Yes, that's your role. That's your policy that I created for that allows this easy to to attach. To assume that one. Before you wrote assume role. Was it my account number? Yeah, that was yours. That was your account. Okay. What, you, what you're also going to notice here is that this is your account here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give this EC2 instance the permission to assume that role, one, right? But I also have to give them S3 access. So even though your policy has S3 access, right? I still, on my side, I also need to give this EC2 the ability to have S3 access. Does that make sense? It has to be on both sides. Okay, so it is your EC2 that you want to connect to my S3. Exactly, yes. So you created the policy, first of all. To allow them to assume that role, yes. Okay, and then you attach the policy to... So now I'm Did creating have... a role. Now I'm creating a role. I'm not creating a role. And on that role, I have two policies attached to that role. One policy says that this institute can assume this particular role your, for your role that you have. And it can also read S3 access, full access. Okay, so you're giving, this role is saying that you can assume the role that I gave you. Yes. And then you can also access, but I've already given you full access. It doesn't now. matter. I seem to give that person full access to S2. Hmm. And we'll, we'll, we'll remove it and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to create this role here. I'm going to find my ECT one since hopefully I have one. I think I have one. I don't know if I created one for myself. But I see for oh, no, Cammy, you had it running. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh. There goes the bill. Nice to connect to it. Oh. I need to give it that role first before I, otherwise it won't to happen. So I'm going to do, give me your, um, let me see, give me your bucket name. Um, E-commerce. Hang on, get on the chat to me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, we don't want to type. <laughs> Hang on, let me Okay, access denied. Let me go on the I have to do one more thing. I'm still not sure why I have to do this extra step, but I have to do this extra step. So you attach the role 
to your EC2. Yes, I need to attach the to my EC2, but it's still not, there's still one more step I have to do besides attaching the to my EC2. The second step here is the one I'm a little bit confused about, but let me go attach the to my EC2. I'm gonna change it to the just to see on my own. That was on my new one. Yeah. Makes me do one more step that I don't still don't understand why that step is there, but it doesn't make me do one more step. So give me access to deny. Uh, I have to do the um, I have to do one more step to allow it. Give me a second here. Mm. Yeah, I just have to do that because I have to set the profile. Let's see, let's see. Okay. You know, I have to do more step here. This is a step that confuses me. Like that's how I need to do that extra step. Chatting me. Who is chatting me? Hmm, I'm not sure who's chatting me. Hmm. This is the part that I still need to figure out why the heck is making me do this. But well, we're not supposed to do any more. No, you're okay. done. You're done. You're done your part. This is the part that I think is interesting why it's making me do this. But let's see. Cross access. I can access your bucket. That's interesting. Why you have to do the config stuff, but um, so yeah, that's kind of the high level steps, right? The the person who owns the account needs to give 
So let me try something. Let me go ahead and remove the S3 access out of my policy and see if it works. So I'm gonna go, ahead. You, go ahead. How did you finally give you access? You saw my screen, right? As I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I still had to, to do one more. Um, it didn't make any sense to you because you're not, I'm not, I'm not gonna <laughs> have you type it. <laughs> so let me open up the profile here. I still needed to do, set up a profile using the ARN for your cross, um, your, um, so it's fine. The role, I have to put the role name on the EC2 instance itself still too. Yeah, okay. Not sure why you have to do that, but you do have to do that before it actually works. But so what I'm going to do is your question was, well, you already gave S3 access, right? Why do I need to give that again on my side? So let's try to see if that actually makes a difference. So I'm going to go to the IAM policy for that one that we had. I'm going to remove S3 read access and see if it's the last one to do. Go to my roles. I'm going to do EC2 access. Rule. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to delete the S3 full access one and see what happens. Oh, just different here. There we go. Show them to detach the policies. I want to detach it. Yeah, so the only one I have right now is the ability uh, permission policy to assume the role. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to run that command again. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm no, you're it supposed to have... give both sides. That's. Unless they change the rule, because even I had a diagram that states that. So that's even one of the exam questions that you have to give the other side permissions to. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it just doesn't make sense. Like, have the permission. So why are you? Yeah. You're supposed to be able to do the. Um, maybe it's only maybe it's only that way for bucket policy. Let me look into that a little bit more because it used to require that. That used to be an exam question. Of you were trying to, you gave permission, but you still weren't able to gain access. Why? Mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, let me look into that a little bit more. So anyway, so that's so high level cross account. So the person who owns the bucket creates an IM role with the permissions that they want. That um, they, okay, so they create a. I am role, what trust entity is the other account. They add mm -hmm. whatever permissions they want to give them access to. And they exchange the, the role ARM with the other party. Okay. Then they create a I am role that includes a policy to assume the role. Although I also thought you needed permission to the resource itself, but anyway, I'll look into that. And then they can attach that role to anybody they want to give access to. In this case, I gave it to my EC2 instance. So that's kind of a high level how the cross account stuff works when it comes to database based policies. So we'll do the same thing with resource based policy, but at least that's how it works from that perspective. Any questions on what we did today outside of the last thing where I need to go and figure out what the heck, what, why it's not required? <laughs> 